Hello and welcome. I'm Al Barrows, and this is UFO Disclosure, the podcast that's meant to show an average person's reaction to all the UFO, UAP news from the internet, books, experiencers, and even our government. Today, I'll be talking with Alice Barrows. Thank you for being here, Alice. I appreciate you helping me with this podcast. Of course. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> I thought that we should do a catch-up podcast uh, since the um, UAP hearings have been in the news the, so so many weeks now. And this um, past July the 26th, there was a big subcommittee hearing. Uh, it was highly anticipated. Uh, it took about two and a half hours. And it's pretty much the latest push by Congress to get some transparency from the intelligence agencies. Um, uh, Congress people argued that um, uh, UAPs are a matter of national security and that UAPs pose a threat to both civilian and military uh, aircraft. So they're pushing for more government transparency. They want more public safety. And the implications are that there's a national security issue. So um, I've been wondering, and I'm sure you have as well, um, do Americans really care at this point? I mean, it's been decades that the government has been keeping this secret. Um, most people assume that the government uh, has had some sort of contact or some sort of involvement with UAPs. Um, so I'd like to address the issue of why should we care at this point? And why is Congress suddenly pushing for disclosure now? Yeah. I'd like well, to get your opinion on that, uh, and then maybe we can show a quick video, a quick TikTok video that summarizes what we're talking about. Yeah, well, I first want to just say how crazy it is that we are, I never thought that we would be discussing a congressional hearing about UFOs and that we'd be discussing it together on a podcast. <laughs> and yeah that I made a film just ab about involving uh, UFOs. That's right. It's, all, it's a very crazy, um, really cool thing that, that we're at this, we're living in this moment. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we should go ahead and play a clip. Um, I'm uh, on TikTok. There are so many people talking about what's going on. And um, I think there's a lot of relatable reactions um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and play just sort of like a, a recap on the hearing in case anybody missed it. So let me do that right now. And this is a TikToker, Gabrielle. Oh, yeah, this is pretty funny. Yeah, she's very funny. Talks very quickly as well. All right, ready? Here we go. Not what they were anticipating. You have to see some of these reactions. They're hilarious. Bro, I don't care if aliens are real. I want to be able to go to the dentist. Taking my alien to the new Barbie movie. I'm not paying student loans if there are aliens. Sorry. Are the aliens over six foot and fully recovered from their ex? Because I could be interested. Me trying to show aliens I'm a good one. <laughs> aliens are going to be super confused when they show up threatening to overthrow our leaders and we're all stoked to offer help. The U.S. government has aliens and UFOs in the procession of the aliens. Aliens deserve to see the Barbenheimer double feature too. I will say, I'm gonna be so pissed if I have to live through an alien invasion on top of a recession, depression, 9-11, Trump, and COVID. Okay, so that wasn't a recap. That was a recap on the reactions. Um, it's pretty funny. That's, and it, that's basically it summarizes a lot of what uh, Americans are thinking. And I guess they're not really taking it as seriously as... Um, they should. Um, and you got to wonder, you know, why should they care about three whistleblowers that um, they don't know from Adam, all of a sudden they showed up. And the hearings are being orchestrated by virtually senior citizens when the average age of the American is 39. Now, you had that incident with uh, Mitch McConnell uh, this past week, where he froze up um, at a, at a Senate uh, news conference this past Wednesday, Diane Feinstein 
was pretty pretty much mentally absent from a Senate Appropriations uh, Committee vote this past week. I mean, they're all good people. God bless them. But Diane Feinstein's in her 90 now, I believe, and um, McConnell's in his 80s. So you have to question, you know, are these leaders really representing us? And um, when you have congressmen leading the push for UAP disclosure, um, you can't wonder why younger people aren't taking it seriously. Um, well, I, I don't think it's necessary that they're not taking it seriously. I think it's, I've also seen a lot of people saying, oh, we've known for a while that UFOs, aliens exist. We've we just have a distrust in the government. So when the government suddenly is trying to be public or have disclosure, it's hard to trust that and not think that maybe there is a, a hidden agenda or even a, oh God, jump scare. Um, I'm sorry about yeah, that. I just thought I'd show the picture of Mitch McConnell and Dan Feinstein. Yeah, when these when these are the people that are leading us and making the the biggest decisions for our our country, you know, it's hard to to feel like they're going to do the right thing or that they have any idea of what the American people are thinking and need. I think there's a disconnect. And so all of the reactions that we saw from that video, that TikTok, I think it's because it's it we we don't we don't trust that it's not that we don't think that what they're saying is true. It's just, why are they suddenly making it public? And I think you've brought up the point that it felt like a lot of the senators were asking, um, were they a threat? You know, was this a, are they a, a national security threat? Thus, maybe there's an agenda of, scaring the people into getting more fun you know it's it's just it's not um it doesn't feel like something that we can really well i think that people uh, our lives over. distrust the government at this point um they have a lot to uh, make up for like i said after 70 odd years of secrecy pretty much lying to us now all of a sudden they want to tell us that they do have contact with ETs and they do have metamaterials or UAPs recovered from crashes. So it's hard to buy into that, you know, okay. Um, there's also the fact that we have so many problems right now going on on earth here um, and people are just trying to survive. Why should we care about what's going on in space? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly the point and how I think a majority of people feel. Like, what are you going to do about us that where so many people are struggling? And, you know, so many people don't have health care. Like, there's so many issues that caring about, oh, there, there are UFOs, there are UAPs flying around in the sky. That's great, but we still have so many other things going on that that need to be focused on. And all the other side to that is something that Dr. Stephen Greer brought up in his press club event this past June the 12th. He said that uh, with the UAPs and the ET contact would come exposure to zero point energy, which would pretty much be free energy that could solve a lot of our problems. So if UAPs are going to be exposed and we're going to be exposed to these uh, ET technologies, we should care if they're going to change our lives. I mean, if we had free energy, we could solve pollution and poverty. Um, and speaking to the fact that um, we don't trust politicians anymore, why should we care if Congress is dubious about it and pulling us into believing that the possibility does exist when President Biden should, by all rights, be addressing this, and he has not yet. Um, he's been avoiding the whole issue. Um, good aspect of what's going on with the UAP earrings is that he's being forced into it because all the 
testimony that's being collected in these UAP hearings is being put in a national UAP archive. And there's been a review board, a UAP review board, um, that looks will be looking at that uh, national archive. And the person that is uh, challenged with appointing these people on the review board is the president. So the first time since President Eisenhower was shut out of the loop back in the 40s, he was shut out of the uh, extraterrestrial phenomenon loop, a president will be directly involved with the ET phenomenon. So you always have to look at the positive side as well. You know, it may seem as though things are moving very slowly, but there is a bit of progress being made. Yeah, I just, I, I think that there would be a difference if you're right, the, the president comes out and says, we've, we've done this investigation, we have hard proof evidence that there are, now actually I would like before we, we move on. Um, I, what I think is really interesting from the hearing was, and there's a lot of things that were interesting, um, but I, I was about to say the president saying that there were aliens that exist or UFOs that exist. I really thought it was interesting how Grush was, was saying non-humans or non-human. Uh, uh, I think he referred to them as um, um biologies yeah he referred to them as biologies which inf infers and he was asked uh by one of the uh panel members during the hearing what he meant by that and he specified non-human um bodies they do have yeah, non-human bodies he chooses he chooses to use non-human because um he, he wants to leave leave uh interpretation for what could exist and and I think that that is so fascinating because I've always felt like we you know, we have this one idea of aliens and the great beings that you hear often and big eyes, the round head. But I think that there is a possibility that there's there's something going on that is so far beyond our comprehension, and um, and so it makes me wonder what uh what you know he said he interviewed i think there's like around 40 people who have witnessed firsthand these ufos uaps and biologies i wonder what they actually found and if it's, it's something that that would shock us all um yeah well, i just wanted to bring let's that not up. forget that um he has to be very careful with his language because this is the most classified information ever in the history of the United States that he's revealing. And also he has a uh, whistleblower retaliation um, um, lawsuit out right now because uh, he claims that the Defense Department retaliated against him once he um, became a whistleblower. So a lot of the stuff that he could possibly say, he cannot say. Um, he did say towards the end that he would be willing to disclose details uh, behind closed doors. And by, what he meant by that is uh, in a room called a SCIF, which is an acronym uh, that means a sensitive compartmentalized facility. And the government uses that a lot when it has to do with classified testimony. Um, only people that are cleared, have a security clearance, can hear what he has to say when it comes to those details. That's why he was so limited in what he could possibly say. But you're right, you know, he did have 40 witnesses um, that he referred to uh, that have seen these materials, because, of course, what he's saying is secondhand. He learned about this from interviewing people while he was working as a UAP task force officer. Let's not forget that he himself was an intelligence officer. So there's some conspiracy theory saying that he might be a disinformant agent, but for now, he's giving a, a world of information, and he is highly credentialed, retired Air Force major. Um, so I appreciate what he has to say, and you have to take what he has to say and and, and use that and hope for more. Um, there were other... Um, 
whistleblowers. I don't know whether you want to put their pictures up, but while the topic of aliens uh, did come up during the conference, um, a lot of discu the discussion mainly centered on uh, the processes for reporting UAPs. Um, there were also a lot of calls to remove the stigma for aviators who report UAP sightings. And finally, uh, there was a lot of talk about ensuring the oversight of government programs that do the actual investigating of UAPs. So for our uh, audience uh, who are seeing this on YouTube, because by the way, the podcast has a YouTube version now, um, the picture here shows the three whistleblowers. The one nearest uh, on the screen to the left is Ryan Graves. Uh, the gentleman in the middle is David Grush. And the one at the far right is David Fravor. David Fravor is a retired Navy commander. He's the one that pilot, piloted the uh, plane that videotaped the Tic Tac video off the coast of San Diego, California. This happened in uh, 2004. The video wasn't released until Pentagon released it in 2020. But the New York Times, thanks to Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal, who wrote the article, re uh, released it in 2017. Fravor uh, pretty much test testified about that. He said that the technology is incredible. We have nothing close to it. Fravor testified that uh, he reported that uh, the sighting and then nothing was done about it. There was no follow-up whatsoever. I, Ryan, I'd like to also bring Yeah, of up, course, um, jump right on in. That, um, he was asked about, you know, did, did they, did, did they find the Tic Tac or the, the object threatening? And he did say, no, I never felt threatened. Or he, I think he asked, the Senator asked him, like, did they have to prepare to react? And he said, no, I, I never felt threatened. Um, but he did also say later on when asked, do, does he think that the existence of these UFOs, UAPs is a threat to national security? He did say yes. But because of the, how quickly they can move, that that our country has nothing that comes close to like the propulsion system that these objects must have. Um, we just have nothing to combat that. Um, but I, but I, I, I like the point that he made that he didn't feel threatened though by this, um, the the tic tac. I'm glad um, you made object. that point because uh, mostly. Um... The overall theme was that they were a threat. So I'm glad you pointed that out. Ryan Graves, which is the uh, youngest uh, whistleblower and the newcomer, is currently the executive director of the Americans for a Safe Aerospace. He's the one at the far left. And in 2014, while piloting his Super Hornet during a training mission off the coast of Virginia Beach, he spotted a, quote, black cube inside of a clear sphere which flew between his Super Hornet plane and a companion plane in his squadron very closely and at a tremendous speed. This became so frequent that they actually started including it in their pre-flight briefings. Can you imagine that? Yeah, I thought that was so fascinating. Also, what a bizarre looking object. I mean, it sounds like something from a sci-fi novel. Like, I don't... I mean, we have certain videos and, um, you know, people who talk about the UFO sightings, but it's usually like a bright light that moves or, you know, the saucer, but a, a black, a black gray, um, was it rectangle or square within a, a sphere? A black gray oh, or a black are. cube inside of a clear sphere. Okay. This was not the Tic Tac. So this is a different uh, object or UAP, if, if you will. He also testified that only an estimated 5% of UAP sightings are reported to the Old Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. He stressed yeah, flight safety, of course. He's now the executive director of the Americans for a Safe Aerospace. So he, he mainly stressed flight safety. And um, going back to the, the Old Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, it actually had 366 uh 
reports of UAPs uh, since last summer. Yeah. So it's ongoing. And that's All probably only a fraction of, of, of what course. was actually. Most yeah. of them are not reported, as Drave said. 5% only are reported. So the vast majority go unreported because pilots are intimidated or afraid to put their careers at jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Mainly all three of the whistleblowers, just to conclude here and wrap up the whistleblower testimony. Oh, uh, before, before you wrap up, yeah, um, of I want to also bring up the talking about bizarre um, flying objects. Uh, he also, Graves also brought up this, is that the Vandenberg airspace, I believe he said? There was a 100 yard red square object that approached their base, which is the size of a football field. When did this happen? I'm, he had graves, uh, he, it was a uh, incident at the Vandenberg airspace. I, I don't remember the date, but he, he said that there was a 100 yard red square like object that flew above their base and then and then flew away. And now we're getting all sorts of shapes and sizes. Yeah, isn't that like what? <laughs> but anyway. How could someone not be curious? So just to go back to my conclusions, just to conclude what the whistleblower testimony was all about, um, the need for a safe and transparent centralized reporting system to report these UAP sightings. Um, they were also hopeful that this public discourse is the first step in eliminating the stigma around reporting UAPs, which is a big thing. And all three hope that these congressional hearings would encourage others to come forward, of course. Yeah. So why don't we move on to the question of why now? Why do you think that we're having disclosure now? Why do you think that Congress is pushing for a disclosure now at a you know after so many years of not telling us anything about it or avoiding the issue or every time it comes up it's comical or it's a stigma attached to it I'm bringing this up um, because Dr. Stephen Greer wrote a paper uh, called when disclosure serves secrecy back in 1999 which is 23, 24 years ago. And he recently emailed this out to uh, his subscribers. And within that paper, he talks about disclosure. And he says that um, it's the type of disclosure that we're having now. And it's when politicians, perhaps through pressure from their lobbyists, for example, aerospace industry giants, for example, and also pressure from the military, politicians are now framing the UAP issue as a threat. He goes, Dr. Greer goes on to say that if a threat from space can be established, then the entire world will get behind and unite to fight the ET threat. And this would guarantee a trillion dollar plus military industrial spending budget well into the next century or beyond. And I'm paraphrase, pra paraphrasing, but that's pretty much the gist of what he has to say in When Disclosure Serves Secrecy. And he pretty much ominously ends by saying, this is the disclosure which already is occurring. It will be a false disclosure. I don't know whether you're aware of uh, Avi Loeb. He's an astrophysicist from Harvard, but uh, he's in the news all the time. and. Um, he said that um, disclosure shouldn't be a threat. It shouldn't be in the hands of the military. He thinks that it's a scientific issue and that uh, people have the right to know, but that uh, the scientists are the ones that are best equipped to deal with the issue. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, it feels like such a human thing to immediately suggest that we need to amp up the military spending to prepare for threats from beings from outer space. Like that is such a narrow-minded human 
reaction and i and i and i think that it's all i mean they're so it's so complex but i do think that there are things that we will discover through these ufos that would change our entire world with the free energy it, it means that the the powers that be would lose you know their business and a whole lot of money and their power along with it there, there's it i think that the disclosure needs to be controlled or is or is being controlled by those people because of yeah the, the way that things would change um but i also think that and the uh, industrial uh, complex if they're smart and they probably already know this that disclosure is happening they should start transitioning into those new technologies not be left behind and that that way they they're can... smart <laughs> exactly do you think that they could though that they they could make that transition they're the ones best situated to do that um and they would be smart if they did that now start converting I didn't want to leave it in a, a negative note because um, we know that uh, whistleblowers, more whistleblowers will be coming forward. And the fact that the United States started doing this might encourage other countries and probably will since we're taking the lead. And hey, the United Nations get involved in this. It's about time, right? This has to do with uh, the whole world. And um, it's a matter of uh, us all getting together and communicating with the extraterrestrials. Um, UFOs as a threat narrative um, can only lead to negative things. Um, look at what's happening with China right now. They're creating a pacing challenge and we're ramping up our war machine because of that. We don't want to do the same with an extraterrestrial race. I want to thank, um, even though a lot of these politicians are under suspect for being disinformation agents, the push that Chuck Schumer, Tim Burchett, Anna Luna, Marco Rubio, and Kirsten Gillibrand, I got to give them credit for what they've done. I think that uh, we should also address the concerns of Americans by possibly showing what Americans think on TikTok. Um, we have a few TikTok videos that I think would lighten the mood and express exactly the way that Americans feel about this whole issue. We'd like to wrap up with that. And we'd also like to come back uh, to you, Alice, and find out what you're doing with your uh, film that directly uh, deals with the alien uh, existence. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like I mentioned before, I'm seeing a lot of reactions on TikTok and a, a lot of um I'd say millennials and their feelings on this and um, relatable. I definitely relate to these feelings. So uh, here's one video um, that I saw. There we go. So there's that one. <laughs> there's there's no audio on this, um, but she was daydreaming about going out with an alien. Is that what that was about? Because this going to go into audio podcast also um, yeah sorry about that what's the next um if you can just describe what the next one is yes so the next one is similar i, I started seeing these videos about um, women joking that the dating pool is going to get larger now that aliens exist and the dating um, pool the dating pool yes okay <laughs> all right let's see if audio works on this how are things going with that alien guy oh alan he wants me to meet his parents what? i'm not ready to go to space mm. you know i need space i love <laughs> our interesting relationship like people look at us down the street and they're like huh i'm holding his his fingers that look like this mm -hmm. and so again talking about dating aliens yeah. um she really looks serious about what she's talking about yeah, it, it basically, I, I'm not seeing any videos of people having fear. I, I don't, I, I don't think I've ever talked to or seen any kind of reactions where people are genuinely afraid of aliens, UFOs. Um, so this whole idea that that we need to prepare and that the public is going to be 
terrified. I, I, I don't know if that's actually going to be the reaction. Um, I but I many... also might. I'm sorry, oh, no, I, I'm just going to say that I think we're over that. We're over ready at this point. We just need to see it, need to see the evidence, the actual evidence is what it is. Yeah, and Possibly the disclosure is going too slow. Yeah, yeah. Again, I think that if our president, you know, made a, a public statement saying that they're real, like maybe there would actually be um, a stronger public reaction. Um, but as of now, it's, there's just too much going on in, in our day-to-day -day lives to freak out or be afraid. Yeah, I want to wrap up by talking about The Forgotten Place. If you can just tell our audience what that's about and how you got involved in it and what's currently happening with it. Yeah, so um, I made a short film um, that I completed a few months ago. So um, it's not out in the, to the public yet, but um, I'm in the process of finding a premiere and it will be online um, probably later in the fall, maybe in the winter, but um, it's a short film called A Forgotten Place. Um, the idea came um, during COVID really, when I started to see on TikTok and on the news, a lot of people talking about UFOs and aliens. And I think when things were so rough and scary at the beginning of the pandemic, I felt like a lot of people were wondering what else was out there and maybe it would be better to be off of this planet. Um, and so that made me think of a story to create or write about a woman who wants to leave the planet. Um, and it really was, the inspiration came from, from you, dad, where, um, I remember I was visiting home in Florida and I saw you had a stack of books about UFOs and I was working on a character and I was like, maybe this character is interested in UFOs and maybe she believes she was abducted. So I then wrote this film and made it. I, I'm the writer, director, producer. I had some co-producers, but I think it's a story that a lot of people um, will feel connected to right now. It's not just about um, I mean, yes, there is a, it's a sci-fi film, um, but it's also a very human film about feeling misunderstood and um, yearning for a connection that, that you cannot find and feel like you can't find on this planet, but you, but this character, um, she feels like she does have a connection with something or someone not from this planet. Um, and I have a a few images that I can share for the people who are oh, um, looking at the video. I have a trailer um, on my website. Um, it's alicelebarrows.com slash. Actually, if you go to alicelebarrows.com, you can then click, click a link to my film. But um, right now. And I, I should tell the images. audience that Alice Lee is spelled, the middle name is spelled L-E-I-G-H. So it's Alice Lee Barrows. Dot com, yeah, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are we um, looking at so that the audio uh, audience can not be? Yes. Yeah, so these are um, stills from my film. Um, so All incredible shots, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we shot it on 60 millimeter film um, up on a ranch near Lake Tahoe in California. It was a very rural setting um, and I have some amazing shots of cows uh, grazing, but our protagonist, Kat, she's um, a woman who has never felt like her family has understood her. And when she was 15 years old, she went missing for two days and has no memory of where she was or what happened. But she has these flashes and these memories that feel like she might have been abducted. When she voices that, no one believes her because she's she's in a very conservative um, place. Her family is very conservative. And so she feels really rejected. So this film is about her coming back home and um, and really confronting those people who didn't believe her, but then some people from her past 
have an idea of what might actually have happened. So her beliefs become um, conflicted, but then ultimately she finds out the truth of what really happened. And, and the um, cinematography yeah, yeah. is just incredible. The way it was filmed really pulls you yeah. in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We, and we, the actors had an are amazing... incredible also. Thanks. Yeah. My, my cinematographer, my DP, his name is Sean Dahlberg. He's based in New York City and he was, he is the most talented um, DP that, that I could have ever worked with. Um, so collaborating with him was, was uh, amazing. This was my first film. So I felt really lucky to have had him. And then my actors are, are all known actors. They're all first time actors. Kat did one short film before this or Alicia uh, Novella Vasquez who plays Kat. She was just, she does a lot of acting with her face um, but I gave her that challenge and I think she just she really I couldn't have found a better actor to embody this character who's who's very very complex um, and then Ian Movius plays her brother Jack um, who also is he's he seems like a good guy but he also just doesn't know how to really be there for his sister um, and then we have Julie who who is uh, an old friend from childhood played by um, Monica Noonan, um, who is just beautiful. And she looks like um, uh, Uma Thurman. Like I remember I, I, the first time I saw her, I was I couldn't believe the, the likeness. Um, but yeah, my, my actor, everyone involved was, was just incredible. So um, I, I'm excited to let people know when that's available to be, to be seen. Yeah, and and thank the vibe, you for allowing uh, me to talk yeah, about. the vibe you created in the movie is just so compelling as well. Um, just one last time, um, what is your website that people can go and see the uh, trailer on? Yes, yeah, so it's my full name, Alice, L-E-I-G-H, Barrows, B-A-R-R-O-S dot com, uh, Alice Lee Barrows dot com. There you can click on a link that says a forgotten place film, and you'll see the trailer, you'll see stills. And I'll update the how to watch it once it becomes available there. Awesome. Forgotten place. Um, thank you for helping me create content for this uh, podcast on the July the 26th uh, UAP subcommittee hearing. Uh, we're looking forward to more and more whistleblowers coming out as this slowly comes about. And we finally had disclosure and we finally have government transparency on the whole UAP issue. Um, I'm Al Barrows, um, Alice Lee Barrows, um, the filmmaker, has been talking with us today. Uh, thank you so much to our audience, and keep watching the skies, keep watching UFO Disclosure, and let's make Disclosure happen. Yeah, thanks for having me.